yes, there are uh, a lot. There, there are uh, quite a few projects that I am working on, and uh, the principal one is my second album. It's called Logic for Reason, and I also have a collection of my old songs with SBC and the songs that I did not get to put out in the journey that I collectively just put together, compiled together, and it's called Ghost and Found, which I will put out simultaneous with my second album. And I'm also working on a project with uh, DJ RB1, and the title is still tentative. Yeah, who's concerned about down? We supposed to squeeze out the potential and slide every individual out before us under the umbrella of a third world nation. Is so what I'm about to touch on? What's the reason behind it? The bread went overseas, work or half of us found. The mother stays home, how the kids running around. One of them is the male, 15 and divide pal. Y'all can find them every night in the corner. Drug down and chills where the mother kids with similar sentiments. Another avenue for five minutes to take the advantage. The smuggle drugs of all sorts to come in all types of forms. Another. Shit. <laughs> well, the projects, yeah, going back to my second album, it's called Logic for Reason. And uh, I just came out with my first album called The Journey. And I just want to go back to that. I'm going to refer back to that because The Journey basically was uh, establishing myself as a solo artist uh, apart from SBC. So I had to call it The Journey to talk about, you know, how I'm going to build myself as a solo artist. That's why I thought of calling it The Journey. So now that I'm in a stage where I'm going to work on my second album, I decided to call it Logic for a reason because I did not want to overwhelm myself with all of my endeavors. I wanted to keep everything in perspective and I thought the right, you know, the right title was Logic for a reason. Everything happens for a reason, which I believe uh, so. And for that reason, you have to be logically, you know, uh, uh, on point, you gotta you gotta keep everything you know logically in place, keep everything in perspective. So I'm working on logic for reason as like my a sequel to the journey, and I'm excited to come out with it. Well, uh, I have to you know on behalf of my group mates in SBC as well as myself, we want to give props and thanks to Raymond Marcigan of. Uh, you know him from Eraser Heads and Cambio Squid Nine. You know the icon himself. He was the one who got SBC's back when we became independent. He was the one who infused the thought of you know doing the live uh, sound. And eventually, we got to gather uh, a lot of uh, sessionists who are also uh, proclaimed and prominent artists from other bands and we ended up forming a, uh, a live hip hop group and we started doing shows and uh, it was lovely from then on you know, it, it became uh, such a distinct sound and uh, we enjoyed doing it Ryan is uh, he's the uh, lead vocalist for his new group it's called Corporate Low File and I think they're coming out with a new album they're very active and doing a lot of shows and I'm very happy for them you know, they He's bringing it. He's doing the whole live thing right now, and you know I'm really, really uh, a fan of them, and I support him. He's doing it. He's doing that right now. And Slim is also in the in the live scene. You know he's the basis for Chili Tees, and they they have you know they're all with their respective groups, Corporate Lofi and Chili Tees. So they're doing that. Well. Uh, that was back in the 19, 1996. Uh, me and uh, Ryan, me and Slim, met up with uh, Puff and Jay and Just Fry, Joseph and Ryan. They're from Sun Valley. And DJ MOD of Master Plan uh, lived in Sun Valley as well. And then uh, we were making demos, we passed it to them. And then uh, MOD you know, dug our sound and invited us to you know, to make SBC larger, and uh, from then on, you know, he had the contact with Universal Records, and it was a blessing. He got assigned, and uh, we went on from there. SBC has been a solid unit for a decade or so, and uh, of course we have, you know, as you get older, you have uh, 
you know, different priorities and interests, although the music is still a common denominator, but we decided to just take a long rest, mass up the moment. And like I mentioned earlier, you know, the guys have their own groups and I'm doing my solo. So, uh, yeah, we're just taking a long sleep. <laughs> well, there's an imbalance. You know, uh, there's an imbalance with respect to the people that have the power to support or to promote artists. Because, you know, uh, they tend to dictate. I'm talking about record companies or people with, you know, with the, with the resources, with the funds. They tend to dictate a lot of things for the music. You know, they get to really... You know, really scream who wants whoever they want to come out. But in reality, if you keep your ears stuck in the street, there are a lot of talent out there. There's a lot of new heads out there that are really, really good uh, that that have the potential to, you know, make it big in the Philippines or internationally. They just need to be heard. So on a street level, we are large. But on the commercial aspect or on the corporate aspect. The imbalance is there, and you know we have to cut across that. And somebody from the street level needs to really bring it to the forefront and let them know that hey, you cannot stop us from spreading our music. Well, I have a lot. I have a lot of influences, and uh, from on the local aspect, I used to. Well, I still do listen to a lot of Master Plan. I have the tape. The first album, the second album, I used to have a Walkman, you know, I always had a, a lot of batteries for it, and I would always listen to in the bus, in the Jeep, going to school, I always had the Master Plan album, the Way of the Planet, the first one, and I memorized all their verses, and uh, I also have uh, Francis M's tapes, as well as Death Threat, the Legit Misfits, I listened to uh, quite a few of Andrew E's songs, because I think he's a storyteller, for my generation, I listen to a lot of uh, PD. You now I have Dramadilla, I have the tape. Uh, Down Earth, back in the days. Of course, Mad Poets, Urban Flow, those guys. I have all their tapes. International aspect, uh, I will never, ever dispense with my The Boots album. Do you want more? Yes, of course, because, you know, if even if you detain all the artists, that are out now, including myself and my colleagues. You put us in prison, lock the doors, there will still be hip hop because hip hop universally, you know, they the sound is there on a the global aspect. Artists are there and then we listen to them. And then even if there are no artists to bring about music locally, there will still be fans of hip hop. Whether not whether even if it's not local you know, they are still fans of hip-hop with international artists. So fans of hip-hop are here. Therefore, since they are here, they live here, the hip-hop is here. You know, hip-hop is here. So last words were, Lockdown Entertainment is my camp, and then we're going to bring out my second album, LJ's Logic for Reason, LJ's Ghost for Fan, and LJ's third album, I already have a title for it, it's called Escrow Stock, it's all in the works. And of course, my project with DJ Harvey One is tentative, but you know we're, gonna, we're working on it. And of course, you know People's Future and uh, Monique's solo installment is coming out soon. So just watch out for it. Those are my last words. So Sonic, definitely in the house. Bring the fourth hip hop information up in the forefront. So Sonic, much love.